I missed my 8 a.m. class five times already because it's too early. My classes are a lot harder than I thought they would be. These people here just don't understand. How come everyone else can do this but me? I'm Blanca Sanchez Navarro and I work here at Texas State University in the Counseling Center. Worked here for 21 years and have a lot of experience with seeing students in distress. And so our intention today is to take the time to kind of walk people through knowing what distress is, what creates distress in students, understand it a little bit and know how to respond because the best response is usually from a friend or a family member. When I use the word distress, what I'm speaking of is when students feel overwhelmed. School is demanding. We're working, we're going to class, we're trying to maintain contact with our family. We're trying to manage our friendships, we're trying to have relationships. There are lots of times when students are coming from situations where they bring their concerns from home, from family, from high school, into their college life. Stuff that hasn't been resolved, or sometimes we don't even know it and things get triggered because we started school. Causes of distress that students go through can range anywhere from family problems, academic problems, maybe there's a, a significant breakup, experience physical or sexual assault, unplanned pregnancies. Every day we're going through different changes that demand an adjustment. And so any day we're going through stress. It can be very difficult to know when someone's in distress. We, we're not always paying attention, but it's important to start paying attention when things like high levels of irritability are going on, when someone stays angry, or there's that prolonged time of sadness and they don't seem to be getting out of it, that sadness doesn't seem to be lifting. We need to pay attention when somebody is cutting themselves off socially. There's a difference between you being an introvert and needing that time alone and isolating yourself and not talking to people, not returning phone calls, not going out with anyone. We need to pay attention to things that are outside that person's normal character. The most important thing about being a friend to someone in distress is just checking in with them. It's okay to ask your friend um, to check in to check with other people. Hey, have you noticed? And when we acknowledge that, we are acknowledging that person and we're expressing a level of care and concern. And that is so important. Knowing someone else cares enough to take the time to talk and check in with you means so very much. In times of distress, it's important for both the person in distress and the person helping them that we try as much as possible to remain calm stop and breathe and take a moment to gather myself. And gathering myself means slow down enough to check my responses. Am I overreacting? Am I underreacting? Really to put things in perspective. Most of the time, a person's going to be helped by that friend or family member or coworker who has responded to them, who has reached back. And very often, that's all we need. There are times, though, that what we need is beyond what our friends can do, beyond what a family member can support. And at Texas State, that's what we provide, is personal psychological counseling for Texas State students. And if the person can be helped here with us, we'll do that. If they need some other type of help, we'll get them to the help that they need. What's really important is we want students to know that if you respond to a student in distress, you are going to make a difference. I feel like I can make it now. These are going to be the best years of my life. I'm so glad I checked up on my friend. I feel like now I got this. 